Welcome to an introduction to economics, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. This is the second short podcast on the public sector. In this podcast, we shall cover the differences between public and private goods, the idea of a mixed good, and the nature and causes of externalities. A further podcast will then examine whether there are solutions to these externalities and the role of cost-benefit analysis. A public good is defined as one where the consumption by one person does not reduce the benefits to others in the society. An example of a public good in this sense would be defence. If we let y equal the total quantity of the public good, and yA equal the amount consumed by person A, and yB the amount consumed by person B, then y equals yA equals yB. In other words, there is no additional cost in supplying a given quantity to an additional person. We can show this using a graph. The dotted line represents the marginal cost of supplying the good, which is along the zero line of the horizontal axis and shown as a dotted line. The price remains at zero regardless of the quantity. This marginal cost line, MC, intersects with the demand curve at point K. We say this is a point of Pareto optimality. 0k units of the good are produced at zero price. The cost of the good still has to be met, and governments have to determine whether to do this through taxation or borrowing. A private good is defined as a good or service whose consumption by one individual results in a reduction of supply to others. A simple way of looking at this is to consider a food product. In a society with two individuals, the more Eccles cakes that are consumed by person A the less Eccles cakes there are for person B. If the supply of goods is Z, and ZA represents the amount consumed by individual A, and ZB the amount consumed by individual B, then Z equals ZA plus ZB. Whilst the marginal cost of the public good was zero, the marginal cost of a private good will have a positive value. A mixed good is a good or service which has both private and public good content. There are actually few pure private or pure public goods. Most will have some content of the other. The marginal cost of using a road bridge remains at zero provided there is no congestion and there is a free flow of traffic. Once the flow of traffic reaches a level of congestion there may be long delays. Then the consumption by one individual is clearly affecting other individuals. So this is where the private good element fits in. At other times it may seem not quite so clear. If I take three friends to work at no cost in my automobile, then the marginal cost of those friends is zero. Thus in this case there is an element of public good. We now come to a definition of externalities. These are the gains and losses that are sustained by others as a result of actions initiated by producers or consumers or both for which no compensation is paid. Consider a model with two factors, two goods and two individuals. The total utility for individual A is given by UA and is a function of all the activities that are directly under the control of A and the activity of individual B. The production externality is written as PC, representing the profits of firm C. These depend upon the N activities of firm C and the activity D of a second firm. There are two characteristics of public goods that we need to understand clearly. The first is that if a good is supplied to one individual, it is then made available to others at no extra cost. Examples are the police force and lighthouses. The second is that if the good is supplied to individual A, then a second individual B cannot be excluded from the consumption. This is rather like saying once a police person has been assigned to an area, then all members of the public have access to the services that person provides. We have mentioned before that there are very few pure public goods. Here are two features that show the limitations of considering a good as being purely public. Goods that are considered public may only be available in a particular locality. There is no public benefit from the Blackpool illuminations if you happen to live in Cardiff, Inverness or London. This is referred to as a spatial limitation. Similarly, we have already mentioned the case of a road bridge, where the good is only purely public, provided there is no congestion. 
This is known as capacity limitation. We can now see our spectrum between private and public using the criteria of whether they are rival and excludable. The pure private good, such as a loaf of bread bought by an individual A, is rival and excludable. A hive of bees that make honey as a product for the beekeeper become a rival good, but the flowers they visit are non-excludable. The beekeeper cannot determine which flowers each bee will visit. The health service can be considered non-rival up to its capacity, but is also excludable in that national insurance coverage is required for it to be a free service. Finally, in the case of defence, we have a pure public good which is non-rival and non-excludable. Most goods will have an element of public and private. We refer to these then as mixed goods. Mixed goods have been compared to the idea of a club. There are economies of scale, so that costs are shared and can be kept down. The services are restricted to members, any non-member is excluded. At the same time, there is usually a limit on the number of members, so that an optimum size is agreed upon by members. Consider the demand for a private good. The demand curve DADA is shown for individual A for good X, and for individual B the curve is DVDB. At price OP the demand is by A is QA, for B it is QB, and so the total market demand at this price is QM. Now consider the demand for a public good. Each additional unit of a public good benefits everyone, so we shall add the valuations to get the demand curve. The measure we are seeking here is how much society is willing to pay. The demand curve for individual A is DADA and for individual B is DBDB, giving a total demand curve of DMDM. Quantity Q then, if A is willing to pay 0P1 and B is willing to pay 0P2, then the price society is prepared to pay is 0p3, which equals 0p1 plus 0p2. Part of the problem in determining price is that there are a number of persons who will attempt to enjoy as many benefits of public goods as possible whilst trying to avoid payment. These are known as the free riders. The supply of public goods may be best provided by central government, as is the case for defence, or by local government, as in the case for fire services or street lighting. Externalities may be described as positive or negative, or sometimes just called good or bad. If the United States were to suddenly double defence spending, this could be seen as a negative externality, since it raises tensions across borders. More commonly, we recognise the pollution from noise, from carbon dioxide emissions, and from nuclear waste as all being negative externalities. However, a nuclear power station may be providing jobs in the local community, directly or indirectly, and these are positive externalities. How do we decide whether a given externality is net benefit or net cost? If there has been a net increase in the total of consumer and product surplus, it is said to be positive. Negative externality implies a divergence between the private costs and the social costs. The discharge of a chemical into a river creates pollution, which is an additional cost to society. This is called the external marginal cost. The social cost curve represents the additional cost of producing each additional unit of good. The demand curve here is DD, and so the output for profit maximization is Q2. However, the Pareto optimal output is where the social marginal cost cuts the demand curve which is for an output of Q1. Why do externalities exist? There is an interaction between consumers and producers. Producers produce drinks and package them in cans. The consumer discards the cans, using the environment as the waste sink. The environment, however, has a limited capacity to act as a sink. At present, there are more flows into the environment as a waste sink than there are flows out of the environment in the form of recycling. Markets do not take account of future generations, so supplies of non-renewable resources are being used up and not replaced. Waste disposal, that is, unrecycled stuff, also represents an externality that is building up as a cost for future generations. The interdependence of producer and consumer contributes much waste in terms of cans, bottles, plastic and other items. 
Since air and water can be considered as resources that cannot be owned, then it becomes harder to ensure that there is no externality to a third party that is negative. This ends our second podcast on the public sector, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For further information on Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.